What's up everybody, The Network Berg here. Hope you've been doing well. In this video, we will be covering configuring a WireGuard tunnel between two Mikrotik routers in order to route VPN traffic. So what is WireGuard? It is a new type of VPN solution that's looking to replace IPsec as well as OpenVPN. It is actually a pretty strong contender. A lot of people use it on their systems, on different routers and maybe servers and such. And I'm going to show you how to set this up on Mikrotik. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's get into the WireGuard setup. Just a quick disclaimer before we begin. This is all happening on router OS version 7. So this is not released on version 6. It's not officially supported on version 6. It's currently a experimental feature on version 7, which I'm hoping will also definitely carry through when they launch version 7. So something to just remember. So if you're trying to set this up and follow along with me on your own version 6 router, it's not going to work because you won't have the packages or the features set to run WireGuard. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's just quickly look at this topology. We've basically got two cloud hosted routers, router 1, router 2, and then they have 192.168.246.x IPs, which are their WAN addresses on Ether1 that these routers will use to connect to each other like over the internet almost. Then I have a private subnet at each router, which is defined here. And then I have fake pieces, which are just other Mikrotik's that are going to act as if they were computers. And then finally, we've got our WireGuard tunnel with this 10.0.0.0 slash 30 subnet, which we will be assigning as IPs between the routers so that we can route traffic across the WireGuard tunnel. So this is gonna be really fun. Let's quickly get onto Winbox. So from Winbox, I'm just going to connect onto router one. And if you look on your management panel, then you'll see there is a cool new WireGuard that I can go to. So I'll click on WireGuard, and then I have two sections that I need to be aware of, WireGuard and peers. So here by WireGuard is where you're basically going to be creating the WireGuard interface, and the peer is where you're going to be defining who you're connecting to, as well as which IP subnet you're allowing across the network. Now, the cool thing about WireGuard is the setup is very simple very straightforward. If you've ever set up OVPN or um, IPsec site to site on Mikrotik, there's a few weird little things that you need to be aware of and that you need to do in order for everything to work. With WireGuard, it is so simple. The moment the tunnel's up, you can just route traffic across it and you just need to allow um, the new subnets over your peer and everything works. That's really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just quickly going to create a WireGuard interface. So click on the plus. We can give it a name, so I can just call this WireGuard1. This is just for admin on the router. You don't need to match this on the two equipment or anything. Um, MTU, so this is just the MTU size of the interface. Listen port, this is pretty important. I'll just copy this, 13231. That is Mikrotik's port that I've assigned. You can give it your own port, but just make sure it's not something that's going to clash with anything else. And then the big important stuff here is the private and public key. So it's blank currently. I could fill this in if I want to, but I'm not going to do that. Because if I just hit apply, it's going to create a private key for me. And there will be a public key as well. So the private and public key, they are both used together in order to encrypt and decrypt the traffic of the VPN tunnel. So that's what we're going to use that for. The public key is also important because this is what your opposite end is going to use to connect to you and they will also similarly have their own public key that they need to share to you in order to connect so i might just keep an eye on that and i'll hit ok and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the second micro and do this from the command line so that you can see us do this from command line as well also just note since it is on beta there is this weird little bug where you need to specify um the port for your remote end from the command line also doesn't take it but we'll see that when we get to the peers so first things first we're going to go to wireguard sorry we're going to go to, go to interface wireguard and then we're going to just add and then what we can do is give it a name so i'll call this wireguard one again the MTU, we don't need to set it, but it was 1420, so I'll just set that anyways. And 
the listen port, which was oof. <laughs> My, uh, listen port was one three two three one, I think. Let, let's just confirm one three two three one. Okay, that's fine. And that should be it. If I hit OK, and I do an interface wire guard print. I get my public and private key as well. Neato. So I've set up the WireGuard interface on router two as well. Next step, we're going to go back onto router one. We're gonna to go to our peers. We're gonna click on the plus. It's going to ask us for an interface. So this will be your WireGuard interface. It's going to ask you for a public key. So this will be your peers public key. So let's just go back into this party session. Let me just copy that. and paste it in here your endpoint so this will be think of this as the public ip of your peer what you're connecting to so in my example i will be connecting to 192.168.246.131 all right and then we need to specify our allowed addresses so think of this as the subnets of the remote end that you want to allow over the wirecard tunnel to connect to you so I'm going to define this as 10.0.0 slash 30, which is just going to be the subnet of the WireGuard tunnel, as well as the IP range of the private addresses sitting behind my neighbor. So in my example, it was 192.168.2.0 slash 24. You can define a pre-shared key. This is just for added security, but I'm not going to do that here. And then I'm going to apply this. So Here's the actual bug because with the endpoint you actually need to make the colons and then specify your port one three two three one. But we, we'll we'll do this on the command line just to fix that. All right, so there is our peer. It's been defined. Now let's do it from the command line for router two. So let me just get back onto Winbox or not Winbox Party. So we'll go interface wire guard peer add. Let's look at our options. I know I need to specify my interface and that was wire guard one. I need to specify my endpoint, which will be 192.168.246.129. And here I actually, this is what I'm talking about where the bug is where I need to put the, the port in 13231. And I'm going to add that via the command line on router one as well, just to make it work. And we need to specify our allowed addresses. So this will be 10.0.0.0 slash 30. And 10. No. 172.16.1.0 slash 24. And then we need to specify our public key as well. So those are the important bits. So let me just quickly fetch the public key of router one. I'm just going to copy that and hit enter. Invalid public key. Okay, I cop. Oh, it, I didn't take the equals. There we go. All right. So if I go interface wire guard print, it should be up actually. So the way that we can test this is we can actually quickly assign this wire guard tunnel IPs to our Mikrotix. So on router one, I'm going to go to my addresses. I'll assign 10.0.0.1 30 to wire guard. And then on the command line, for router two, I will add an IP address, add address equals 10002 slash 30 interface is WireGuard. Okay, so first things first, let's see, can we ping across the tunnel? Ping 10.0.0.1. I can ping 10.0.0.1 from 10.0.0.2. So I'm pinging across the WireGuard IP now. So from dot two i'm pinging to dot one so that's over the wire guard tunnel let's see from router two can i ping this one 
72161.1 address. No, I can't. Why can't I ping it? I have to find it in my peer, but I can't ping it. And the reason is I haven't added a route for that yet. So let's quickly add a route. So we can do that by going into IP route, add destination address equals 172.16.1.0 slash 24 and our gateway will be if you look at the topology it's going to be the tunnel ip of router one because i'm on router two so this will be 10.0.0.1 cool <laughs> now i need to add routing from router one as well even though let's quickly do a test let's see can we ping 172.16.1.1 now we can ping that now the reason we can ping it is it's actually pinging it from the 10.0.0.2 address. But if I'm going to ping this from 192.168.2.1, it's going to fail. And the reason is there is no return route on router one yet. So let's quickly go into router one, go into our routes. Let's click on the plus and add a route for 192.168.2.0 slash 24. And our gateway is the tunnel IP or the WireGuard IP of router two. I'll apply that and let's hit OK. And let's jump onto our test PC. So I'm going to go back into PC one. Let's quickly see, can I ping 192.168.2.1? Holy smokes. I can ping across the wire so the well, I almost called it Wireshark, <laughs> the WireGuard IP. Uh, let's see, can I ping dot 100, which is a PC's two address? Yes, I can. So let's just jump back onto Winbox and then let's verify that by going onto WireGuard, look at our interfaces, and then we can actually see there is traffic passing over the interface. If I look at the status, it is up. If we look at the traffic, there is the traffic that is traversing this WireGuard tunnel. If I torch it, I can see the ping as well. Amazing. So we've set up a wire guard tunnel between two sites and kind of set up an IP uh, site to site VPN using WireGuard. And it was super quick and easy if you think about it. So really, this is a feature I'm super excited about. I do hope router version seven comes out and that is very soon and then it brings WireGuard with it. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video. Oh, and I'd like to remind you guys to subscribe and like and share the video and comment if you have any questions. Thanks again. Bye.